Hello and welcome to Fatima Today. This show is produced by the World Apostle of Fatima USA, Our Lady's Blue Army, and brings topics to you, our viewers, related to the events in the world today. We live in tumultuous times when logic seems to have disappeared and uncertainty hangs over us. Our hope on these programs is to address the issues of the day and find solutions through adherence to the laws of God, especially through the message of Fatima. We ask that you subscribe to this podcast. In 1947, Mr. John Hafford, co-founder of the Blue Army, commissioned the Statue of Our Lady of Fatima to help facilitate evangelizing the message of Our Lady to the world. This image soon became known as the International Pilgrim Virgin Statue. In these 75 years, this image has traveled throughout the United States into over 100 countries, accompanying the custodians who bring her message to the many visitors. Patrick Sabat directs the program for the World Apostle of Fatima USA and has served as the custodian for this statue for the past 19 years. Patrick is here today to discuss the history of this program and our plans as we begin our second 75 years. Welcome, Patrick. Oh, thank you, Dave. Such a beautiful uh, celebration for the it Blue is. Army. Seventy-five this is such, years. Such an honor to be working uh, for the, Our Lady's Blue Army. Absolutely, for all. And of us. Uh, oh, thank you for that uh, introduction. Yeah. You know, the statue has always had a, a full-time custodian. Right. You know, in the last seventy-five years, and I have this honor of accompanying her when the history, the statue was only 55 years old. That's right, that's right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so thank you for, you know, your the trust and the uh, sure. the confidence. Oh, you've done a great job with program. it. We appreciate it, yeah. And I think, you know, you have a, um, you have such a great understanding of this evangelization. You know, the World Apostle of Fatima, as we are today, our Blue Army, founded 75 years ago, was founded as what? Blue Army of Prayer. Okay, an army on its knees. Yes, right? silent okay. army That's on its knees. I love that. Yeah, yeah. We with keep hearts that today. open. To Mary. There you, you go. Know, and that's, that's who we our, are. Our founder, Mr. John Hafford, had yeah. said that word. And that's right. Yeah, that's yeah. our uh, charism. You know, it, it's such a gift to have this beautiful image of Our Lady. You know, all those years, the program, like you said, you know, it has developed throughout the years. It used to be, uh, uh, they used to be priests, the right. custodians, Typically. Monsignor McGrath, who first directed the uh, mm -hmm. the uh, Coast to Coast tour, the tour for peace uh, back in 19. Uh, 47, of course, December 8th, Mr. John Hafford and actually Canon uh, Galamba, yes. um, who brought the statue right. uh, to the U.S. Uh, through Canada. That's correct. So That's correct. December 8th, 1947. But it's very interesting, you know, as we celebrate uh, the beginning of the 75th year anniversary, uh, October 13, 1947, when it, it was blessed uh, in the presence of 150,000 people in the, mm -hmm. in the shrine, the spot of her apparition. And from there, it traveled the world, um, you know, became known as the International Pilgrim Virgin Statue. Yeah, I, I don't think people, uh, <clears throat> people often say, well, it's a statue. It, it's an inanimate object. Well, certainly it is, but it's blessed. And Our Lady does travel with it. I mean, there's no question about that. Oh, no that. question. I mean, they know. pray that Mary herself accompany the statue wherever sure. it goes. Of course. And that, that blessing, I think, remained. You know, it's not something that you can take away from it. Yeah. And um, I think it's more than the statue. It's the mission yes. of the statue, why they sent the statue. It's the same reason why Our Lady's Blue Army, our organization, was founded. Right. It's not a you know, hierarchy. It's not an institution. It's not simply an organization. Right. It's the mission that was given to all its members. Exactly. And the statue with the mission, you know, it becomes a visual catechism, sure. you know, by the virtue of that blessing. And it reminds, it directs our attention. You know, people are like, oh, it's a beautiful statue. But if you look at the statue, it's a visual aid, you know, how That's she appeared. Correct. And more importantly, you know, people, you know, a lot of women are, women are asking, oh, what color were her eyes? Right. And, you know, Lucia was so faithful with how Our Lady looked like. But more importantly, what did she say? What did she say? And so when we look at the statue, what does it represent? You know, the praying hands, pray the, you know, the rosary. She held the rosary in her hands. Uh, even the star is there, significance of the statue. And people are asking me, 
Is this the original statue? Well, it's the original Pilgrim Virgin statue. Right. The first statue that was made by the same artist, Jose Tadem, they call him the Michelangelo of Portugal, by the way, <laughs> you know, really great artist, yes, he, yes, he was. sculptor. So he sculpted the first one out of cedar. Yes. It's, I think, a little softer wood to work with. But then they knew that the International Pilgrim Statue will be traveling, so it can take a lot of beating, yeah, <laughs> so to sure. speak. So he sculpted it out of mahogany wood. That's correct. A little more you know, solid, but flexible. But then, yes, that's Lucia. When she saw the first statue, the one that's behind the glass, if you go to Fatima, Portugal, the one that uh, sits at the shrine in the Capelina, uh, you would see some change, like, oh, how come it's different? Because Lucia was into the details. Right. You know, it looks like this. Uh, the mantle, she wasn't wearing a long sleeves, only one sleeve, and just one cape over it, you know, golden lining. Because the one that sits there, it was made in 1920 yes. by the same artist. But it's more elaborate with a lot of ornaments and yes. tassel. Lucia said, no, it's a golden globe, a uh, star here, a uh, little more lifelike, and she's not smiling. She's got a serious face every time she appeared. You can imagine why. <laughs> Absolutely. The of, you know. Why she came, the state of the world, mm -hmm. then and today. Yeah, and again, I think, the know, message. Well, let's say, I mean, our apostle was founded 30 years after the, the apparitions of Fatima. Mm -hmm. Now we're 75 <laughs> years beyond that, okay? And uh, we're at 105 years since the apparitions, and we still haven't listened in reality, okay? Yes. <laughs> to a great degree. Now, that's not totally accurate. Right. A lot yeah. of great reparation. I think people to our apostolate and others work very hard, mm -hmm. truly, truly have. Uh, and, and I've watched what you're talking about with these statue visitations, because my history, I've been over, over 10 years, now 2012, I came on as the executive director of the apostolate. Um, preceding that, um, I was a member of the Board of Trustees for mm -hmm. quite a while, yeah. so I was involved. Mm -hmm. But I also come from Chicago and from the Chicago Blue Army, right. and I served as the vice president there for some years. So for many, many years, I was involved and aware mm -hmm. of these programs, these statue programs. We had a statue of these who were on the archdiocese right. there, still does. Um, but, but we would bring in this very special statue occasionally for a very special visit. Mm -hmm. And the history that came with it was so important. Right. Okay. Yeah, you know, a lot of people uh, attest to that, that, yeah, it's not just a statue, but I always say it's the moral presence of Mary. Yes. Can you imagine the millions of people who venerated the same statue oh, all those goodness. years, yeah. 75 years? Yeah. We were in India for three months back in, this was one of my first trip uh, in, uh, in the Southeast Asia and the Pacific. Uh, we stayed there for 75 days. Like we were visiting five to seven churches a day. Oh my goodness, wow. what a schedule. You're a much younger man. Than <laughs> I was 25, 26 yeah, years yeah. old at that time. Uh, but they, the, the officials, because we, we were working with a big uh, committee, you know, with the police, with the uh, lay people, with the clergy and the bishops, uh, they estimated that the statue has been shown to about three and a half million people amazing. in the span of 75 days. Of yes. course, it's a large population right. in and the southern large crowds coming, state yeah. of India. And, yeah. you know, we would stop in uh, intersections, big uh, uh, welcome signs, uh, even, uh, believe it or not, even the Hindu uh, would have, it's, I don't think it's blasphemous or sacrilegious in a way, because again, it's a function. Yeah. But we would stop in those like government buildings, yes, of course. Hindu temples, and well, yeah. priests of the Hindu temples would come out to welcome Our Lady. Yeah, sure. And some Muslims would even welcome Fatima. Well, and, and, and the Muslims do have a, a, a reverence for the Blessed Virgin. That's yes. In the Quran, you see that. You know, right. It's true. Yeah. And, and I think that's the point. This is a very ecumenical image. Okay. That's you. You you nailed it. Yes. That's what it's about. I mean, because because the Fatima message is not just for you know baptized Catholics. It's for right. the world. 
even for non-Catholics. That's yeah. why, you know, we, we, we are fond of using the peace plan from heaven. Right. And peace in the world is not only the affairs of the Catholics. Right. Of course, it's for everybody. And again, our mission with the Blue Army to spread the message of Fatima, to pray the rosary, you know, prayer penance as a means to peace, right. you know, and we know where it's going. Yes. You know, we need to, you know, the message of conversion. That's why, you know, when I always direct the attention to the statue, you know, what is she asking, you know, in this gesture? You know, Our Lady appeared, of course, different uh, gestures. But Lucia, again, being faithful to not only how she looked like, but then again, it's how you look, how you present yourself. Oh, sure. That's how Our Lady looks like. That's how she looked like to Lucia. That's why she even asked, uh, Lucia asked Our Lady, where do you come from? Because she said, I've never seen such a beautiful young lady in yeah, this yeah. part of the, uh, the town. Sure. And so, you know, I come from heaven. So again, those gestures, she was so um, calm, peaceful in a way, but serious. Mm -hmm. uh, so for us, it becomes a visual catechism. Oh, very much so, because she's bringing a very serious message. Mm -hmm. So she's not going to come laughing necessarily, not going to come <laughs> yeah. even smiling, only maybe maybe <clears throat> just to console a little mm -hmm. bit. A little yeah. bit. But, yeah. but generally, she says, I'm bringing you a very serious message for the fate of the world. Mm -hmm. Take it seriously. Right. Did it in a kindness, did it with a, a motherly uh, you know, thing, but she was not, she, she was trying to, to have these children understand so that we would understand it's a very serious thing she's mm -hmm. bringing to us. Yeah, that's right. That's a mother, you know. It's yeah. uh, If it's a visual catechism, she's a, catech a mother catechist, you know. She's yeah. a, you know, teaching all her children. And all those years, you know, uh, one of the custodians back in the uh, 70s and 80s, uh, Mr. Louis Gasmeric, sure. she he even wrote a book, The Wonder She Performs. Yes, and it's a great the book. Chronicles. It's still available. For, uh, yeah, for the her. journals of yeah. the the wonders of Our Lady, the wonders she performs. Mm -hmm. And going back to Pope Pius XII's uh, statement over the Vatican Radio when he made that remark, you know, she, because that's the mission, the basic mission of Our Lady, you know, to, to, um, bring graces to those who may never be able to come to visit Fatima. She comes right. to your parishes, to the dioceses. She comes to us. And going back to Pope Pius XII's uh, statement about the statue, he said, uh, we crowned Our Lady as, as Queen of the World. Uh, and the next year, she set forth as though to claim her dominion. And the wonder she performs are such that we could hardly believe what we are seeing uh, with our own eyes. So I think Louis Gasmeric caught that, the phrase, sure. the wonder she performs. Sure, of course, of course. Uh, yeah, right. And, uh, you know, even Pope Benedict the uh, the 16th, when he visited Fatima, mm -hmm. uh, kind of when I, when I heard that, I kind of felt uh, affirmed with our mission, with yes. the, Our Lady's Blue Army, because he said the message of Our Lady of Fatima was only known to the unknown shepherd children in 1917, but it became known and widespread, he said, mainly as a result of the travels of the Pilgrim Virgin. Sure. Doesn't course. that affirm Our Lady's Blue Army? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So well, if you remember our founder, co-founder, John Haffert, said he wanted to bring Fatima to the people and then the people to Fatima. That's why we built Thomas Pachas, our hotel retreat center right, right. there. And the idea was, I mean, obviously, ultimately, you want them to come and truly experience Fatima mm -hmm. there. But many, many, most people who mm -hmm. see this statue never get to Fatima. Right. Okay. That's uh, why it's a good thing we have Ave Maria pilgrimage tours. I you know, that's we're, right. We're bringing We have many pilgrimages Fatima. that go. And now in this post-COVID time, we want it to really keep building up again mm -hmm. because that's what we're there for, to bring people to really experience it. And that, that is a beautiful thing if you can. But the reality is, you know, for many people, simple people, people without the means, people in third world countries, they're never going to be able to in many cases. Right. So let's make sure they can get all of the same blessings. Mm -hmm. I love the sign that we have in front of the statue. Do not touch her because people do tend to want to fall the statue. <laughs> but do not touch her. She will touch you. That is so and true. And I think that is very true. And she does. And I've seen it. Oh, my goodness. I, I will recall one time when uh, you were in Arizona 
with the statue. I was there. And I remember just, I was in the back, and there was a gentleman, an elderly gentleman, who was very generous to us. He was, he was just a wonderful man, you know. And I remember I was there talking to him a bit, and he was in a walker, and he went up. And I just, I just couldn't help but watch him kneel down in front of that statue and just have, like, just almost a transformation mm -hmm. of his mood. He was, he was um, uh, very touched. Very, you can see that he had been devoted and would continue to be devoted, but just, just the way he was praying in front of that statue, you know that that was going into his heart and coming from his heart. Mm -hmm. Yes. And that's, that's really the thing. And, you know, you, you made a comment about you were in your 20s when you made that whirlwind trip to Southeast Asia, mm -hmm. not just Asia. And I, um, I remember in 20, was it 2019, when we did the, the, the missions of, of St. Junipero Serra right, in California. Yeah. We started like in San the, Diego, ended up in, the, in like San Francisco. The, yes. And I traveled for several days with mm -hmm. Larry Magino, who's our, our right, custodian, yes. you know. And, with the uh, RV, yeah, I remember with the you RV, stayed in the RV I did, for and I a couple you, of days. This is a younger man's <laughs> game, I will tell you that much. <laughs> it's a lot to it, but it was beautiful. We visited all of the missions mm -hmm. of yeah, St. Unipro Serra, that's... how we brought the faith to California, mm -hmm. and uh, a little bit troubled by how they're trying to diminish his reputation because uh, it's yeah, not really that's so it. sad. He worked so hard to bring the faith to the indigenous people mm -hmm. and, uh, yeah. and succeeded to such a great degree. Mm -hmm. I even took a photo of, uh, of him, uh, St. Junipero Serra, because uh -huh. uh, there's a lifelike uh, statue, yes, how there is. tall he is. and yeah. like, kind of like, oh, I'm taller than him. <laughs> I'm a short guy, but uh, this time you take advantage I'm, of this stuff, I'm a little taller. <laughs> but uh, anyway, yeah, that's uh, those uh, kinds of uh, stories are, you yeah. know, what I, I believe it's what Our Lady, you know, kind of give me, give me, you know, as uh, some sort of uh, consolation and spiritual graces. Oh, my goodness. All throughout the years, I've been uh, traveling with her, you know, they call us by many names, you know, guardians of the statue, custodians of Our Lady, or mm -hmm. escorts, you know, all those little, but I, I prefer, or what's my favorite title? It's Our Lady's Donkey. There you go. You know, we travel. She rides with she you, eats. just like she rode at the visitation. <laughs> yes. <laughs> the visitor yes. cousin Elizabeth on a donkey. Yes. So. And I, I think that's, that's really what, and we are, we're all, we're all here to serve God. That's why we're in mm -hmm. this, this position that we are very blessed and fortunate to really be all of us to be part of this apostolate and, and to be doing this kind of work. Um, I want to uh, refer to our very successful two-year campaign during the, the, oh, the, during centennial the centennial because of course the two years of the centennial of 2016 was the Angel of Peace, 2017, mm -hmm. or, or excuse me, 1917, the apparition. So our centennial 2016, 2017, and if you remember our goal was when we put this program together is we have one we want to visit 100 dioceses in 100 weeks, and I believe we we visited in our motorhome, Our Lady's Chariot, as yes. we call it. Um, we visited 140 dioceses, I believe, every state in the union. Now we didn't drive the motorhome well, to last yeah, Hawaii, to but Hawaii. that went by plane. But but uh, we we visited not every diocese, but every state. In the All the 50 states. Yeah, and yeah. That was, that's special. It was yeah, so special. it's one for the books. And we have some amazing, amazing videos of this. I mean, I, I, I remember the one in Chicago where we, where we, just 3,500 people in that yeah, procession, from, I believe. Uh, St. John Cantius um, in yes. Chicago, uh, on Chicago Avenue, wasn't it? That's You'd correct. look more familiar. Right, because yeah. I'm from there, yes. Mm. Um, but then in Brooklyn, <clears throat> Oh, yes. from Brooklyn, New York, the same huge numbers oh, of people. Oh, yes, from church to church. church I remember church. in Brooklyn, yeah. New York, we have the police officers escorting us yes. from one church to the next. You know, yeah. all the lights and blinkers, right. uh, probably mm -hmm. three or four police cruisers escorting Our Lady to the yeah. next church, and the fire department was there. Yeah. Um, I remember Chicago very well because there was a... A mini miracle, if you call it that way. But I think spiritual miracles are very important. Oh, sure. And this is one of those miracles where uh, a man, Father uh, uh, Joshua from St. John Cantius, was telling us the story. He said um, there was a man who was ready to, you know, drink his life away, ready to end it. Um, he was in a bar and he saw the blinking lights. And he was curious, oh, this is Chicago, another violent crime, and police <laughs> are out in the streets again. And uh, But 
he sent something different. This one was a little more peaceful. And this one, a uh, lot of people, thousands of people with candles and praying the rosary. Mm -hmm. And he saw be, the statue being processed yeah. on the street. And he mm -hmm. kind of felt the grace right there and there to, you know, stop the drinking and whatever uh, evil plans were, you know, uh, sure. in his mind. Uh, in his mind. Uh, very interesting. The next day, he went to confession. Very interesting. So again, we can say this is, you know, as a result yeah. of the travels of Our Lady. Well, that very night, I recall, uh, we went by the fire station, if you recall. And I remember as we're going by, all of a sudden I see all the flashing lights. And oh my God, we have to get out of the way because there's a fire. Yes. And I gotta, all the trucks are going to pull out. <laughs> no, they put on the flashing lights on the trucks and then all the fire, a number of them, came to the curb to greet Our Lady. Now, yes. That was really something. That's something. That was yes. beautiful. You know, mm -hmm. Many of them, of course, probably Catholic, but maybe, maybe not even. Mm -hmm. But they just were so, they just in such like an honor guard, they just stood there as the mm -hmm. procession went yeah. by with all the lights flashing and everything. Mm -hmm. you know, I thought that was really, really special. And, but these are the things I think that, that, that come forth, you know, because, you know, again, it's the presence of a statue, but it's the presence of Our Lady. It's the presence of we who are professing this mm -hmm. and, and people to look at, like the man in the bar you speak about, you know, something wanted him to have something that we had. You know, right. they say you cannot give mm -hmm. what you do not have. Well, that's why it's so important for us who work in this type of thing to, to strive for that holiness, mm -hmm. you know, and then help others come there and they see it in you. They see the joy, they see the, mm -hmm. um, whatever it is that, that, that attracts them and they want part, they want to be part of it. Right. And Our Lady with the statue, again, it's the role of Our Lady, you know, the, um, we, we do not end with just the, oh yeah, we had a big procession and that's the end of it. No, she leads us to the sacraments. Absolutely. See how yeah. she had this man, young man, you know, back to the sacraments, to right. confession, sacrament of reconciliation. And I've seen that. It's fascinating to see uh, conversion stories, you know, where people, because of that, oh, there's a lot of cars in the church. I don't know what's happening. It's a Tuesday afternoon. What could be going on? Yeah. And they were curious. They'd see, and at that time, they see the statue, that sense of um, Our Lady, you know, inviting, uh, inviting them, inviting all of us to come to her son, our Lord, were, uh, you know, for our statue tours, we do our, uh, you know, Eucharistic uh, reparation, night vigils. We have the uh, Eucharist exposed for the most part of the visit yeah. and then praying the rosary. So throughout the day, we have set a program all these years, you know, for 75 years. I don't think it's changed uh, a lot, but we adapted to the time, the, the times. And of course, whatever it is now we're, we're doing, you know, we're adding more and more uh, so that people can, can consume, can, can have more materials and literatures that yeah. we put out there on our table during our statute. Yeah, and we're going, I, like I say, as we go more into this electronic age, as mm -hmm. with the fact that we're doing that's this right. very podcast, you know, mm -hmm. to test to what, how we have evolved as an apostolate. But, you know, being there in a church, praying, you know, I mean, you know, in the presence of Our Lady and of course, in the presence of the Blessed Sacrament. Right. And here we are now in our 75th anniversary year, and we are we are a, you know a cooperating organization with USCCB with this Eucharistic revival because right. that's the foundation mm -hmm. and nothing better than you go into a a, a a visit and here's the Pilgrim Virgin statue and here's the tabernacle mm -hmm. that's what it's all about yeah okay that's yeah. really what this is reparation for sin Eucharistic <clears throat> reparation Our Lady is there you know pointing to our Lord and the Blessed Sacrament yes there for us exactly you know I met a lot of people. Uh, even while traveling, we have the RV. People are asking or taking a photo of our website or phone numbers. Yeah. Uh, when we're in the airport, when we fly, you know, I'd like to tell, let the people know we buy her a ticket. Yes. You know, she yes. sits uh, right next to me. <laughs> She's prominent. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I can tell you, she loves the window seat. <laughs> uh, yes, she can look out. <laughs> what going on. I, I does, uh, you know, open yeah. the zipper, you know, in the right. soft padded bag, and yeah. people can see she's standing, uh, yes. uh, standing on the seat basically. And then I would turn on the overhead light, 
in that's the airplane nice. and nice. spotlight shining and on and her. Some, and some of the great responses, even from pilots and that, that have oh, come yeah. out and announced that, you know, that she was on the plane. Well, you know, and uh, on, um, on the 9th of October of this year, we were, um, of course, in Washington for the Rosary Coast to Coast. Right, we yeah. participate every year. And that, of course, is, is a procession from St. Peter's on Capitol Hill to the mall in front of the Capitol. And um, uh, I was asked to be a speaker this, this, this time, and we had Our Lady with us. And I think we'll, we have some pictures here we'll show uh, as part of this. But here is here, here we are at a podium, we're speaking, here's Our Lady, and in the background is the U.S. Capitol, you know, mm -hmm. and saying, you know, I, and I, I, and I, you know, and she's probably ready to turn around and say, what are you people doing back there, okay? <laughs> Start listening to me. Yes. But the grace of a day like that is great. And just by the, the comments that people made as they walked by, here we mm. are in the mall, right? You know, mm. between, yes. between the Capitol and the, and the, uh, uh, the Washington Monument. And, mm. and, and, it, and it's, just, it's very touching to be part of that, to be there, but that she was there. Mm -hmm. okay? And so many people would comment on it. Well, you had a few hecklers here and there, that's always gonna happen. But, but generally, people understood the presence, our presence, praying, mm -hmm. you know, that rosary coast to coast after a one mile Eucharistic procession. Right. And uh, right. Uh, His Excellency Bishop Coffey was with was us. There. Yes. He, he held the Blessed Sacrament in procession and led the rosary nationwide mm -hmm. afterwards. But see, this is, this is our faith. This is what our apostolate is founded for, to bring that message of Fatima. And the message Fatima is one of reparation um, and you know, and I mean, and what we what was done 105 years ago, what was started heavily 75 years ago by our apostolate, which then became worldwide. Mm -hmm. Now we're going into the new seven, the next 75 years or beyond. Beyond. And what do we want for that? As we asked before, sign that pledge that you know that Mr. Haffert worked out with Sister Lucia to pray the Rosary, to be devoted to the Vow Scapular, to live according to your state in life. Mm -hmm. You know. And then, Our daily duties, yes. Daily duties, and then work towards the fulfillment of the first Saturday's devotion. Mm. That's that was what was asked seventy-five years ago, and that's what we ask today. Call it a pledge, call it joining a membership, whatever, however terms we use today. It's the same thing. Yes. You know? Are you willing? Are you willing to do what Our Lady asks? And like you ask all the time, with a little booklet we have. Yes. Say, say yes, yes to Our Lady. To Our Lady. Yes. Will you say yes to Our Lady? And I think that's really. Um, that's really the key to it. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's really what will bring us, will bring about the triumph of the Immaculate Heart, and will bring peace to this 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 horrible world right now. This world mm -hmm. is just suffering yeah. so much from a lack of identity. All right, let's bring that identity to the world even more. Yes, yeah, yeah. yes. So, I mean, what are su other suggestions you have for people as we close on this? Uh, well, this always visit our ladies' website, bluearmy.com, yeah. bluearmy.com. And, of course, if you would be willing to accept the suffering God wishes for you, uh, that's the question she asks the children of Adama. She's asking us also today, uh, be part of this spiritual movement of an army, according to our founder, an army, silent army on its knees, with hearts open to Mary. You know, we invite everybody to open your hearts to the graces from Our Lady. Invite Our Lady's uh, pilgrim statue to your diocese. Go to our website, again, bluearmy.com, and become active, uh, you know, members of your parish and go back to the sacraments. You know, those who may, you know, are listening and searching for answers, you know, we have Our Lady by our side in this battle, so. Yeah, we had a, um, and, and I wanna thank you for joining us here today. We had a, a billboard campaign around the country some years back, you might recall. It said, the world is in terrible, the world is in need of help. We have the answer. Okay. And it said bluearmy.com, it was right there. You know. So anyway, thank you for joining us today, Patrick. Thank you for being here. Um, we hope that you enjoyed this, found us informative. For more information, as we said, bluearmy.com. And we hope that you will subscribe to this podcast. Thank you, and God bless you.